Welcome. This is the September of 2022 Solar Cycle 25 update. And I have some sad news for some people. The Grand Solar Minimum has been cancelled. It's official now. And I'm sure those that have been accepting money from you for supporting this event will give you a full refund. <laughs> Just kidding. A quick summary of what we're going to talk about today. The sun continues to climb towards solar maximum. NOAA has numbered 25 new regions during the month. The smooth sunspot number is still increasing. We had 13 M flares, 290 C flares, but no X flares during the month. There were 113 coronal mass ejections, and we had a spectacular geomagnetic storm at the beginning of the month that lasted for nearly five days. First, we'll start off with some sunspot movies. This is using the SDO HMI instrument. It's a 28 day movie. Two seconds is equal to about one day. Second movie is a magnetogram movie, same instrument and cadence, but the instrument uses the Zeeman effect to measure magnetic fields on the sun. Magnetic fields are shown here in both black and white. Black indicates negative field, i.e. field going away from us. White indicates positive field, that's field coming towards us. And the thing to note here are the two polar regions. In the north, you can see that the polar region is more white, so that means that the north polar region is positive. In the south, it is negative. And it's how these evolve through the coming years that tells us where we are in the solar cycle. When these fields disappear, then we're at near or at solar maximum. If we look at the sun, September sunspot number, it increased over August. August was at 74.5, uh, September was at 96.3. We can take a look at the longer term variation in sunspot number. Here the yellow dashes are the daily sunspot numbers and you can see they are highly variable. It's been nearly a year since we had a, a spotless day. The blue here is the monthly average, and while smoother, they're still quite variable. And then the red curve here is the smooth sunspot number, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But anyway, the activity this month was the highest during the solar cycle so far and tied with May of 2022. The activity rate is still accelerating. This is the number of regions that produced a sunspot of any kind, small or large. First of all, you can see that this is accelerating. The curve is curving upwards. And we could compare this with the official NOAA numbering system. The shape is similar, but they have lower statistics because they require certain characteristics of a sunspot region before they'll count it. Well, let's take a look at the smooth sunspot number. And this is the thing that's used to determine solar minimum and solar maximum. And it's a 13 month running average of the sunspot cycle. So the most recent data point we have is March of 2022. 
However, you can see the sunspot number is continuing to rise quite rapidly and is accelerating. So that means that we're still nowhere near solar maximums yet. This number has to level off and then start going down. And it probably won't be for a couple of years after that happens that we know whether that particular time will be solar maximum or not, because we may have a second or a third peak like we did last time. There's been a lot of controversy about whether solar cycle 25 is outperforming solar cycle 24 or not. This is the smooth sunspot number for the two cycles. Orange is solar cycle 24, blue is solar cycle 25. And you can see from the very get go, the solar cycle 25 was outperforming solar cycle 24. And it's by about 30%, which if that translates to the peak of the cycle would be maximum of about 155. You'll recall that a couple of years ago, I was predicting that this maximum will be 165. So that's wholly consistent with those. These, by the way, are measured in months from solar minimum in each case. So they are comparing like with like. There are other ways of predicting the solar cycle. There's various models that you can use. The Waldmeier model, which is called the standard model, predicts 12 months in advance and says by this time next year, the sunspot number should be something like about 180 and still rising. Now, I think that's probably fairly optimistic, but we'll see how it turns out. There's the combined model, which is more conservative. And you will see by this time next year, it says the sunspot number will have leveled off at about 120. That doesn't mean it won't go down and then come back up again. And then there's the McNish Lincoln model. It predicts in about a year's time that the, the sunspot number will be about 125 and it's still going up. So we haven't reached solar maximum as yet. Well, we can take a look at the solar cycle projection. Now, the red curve here is the projection that NOAA and NASA agreed on. And the dark curve is actually the real data. So the sunspot number is outperforming the model from NOAA and NASA by about 84%, which would predict a solar maximum of about 220. You can look at another indicator of solar activity, which is the F10.7 centimeter radio flux. And that's outperforming the NOAA NASA model by nearly a factor of two, which would put solar maximum at about 240. So quite a large range, even this late in the cycle, as for possible projections. Let's go take a look at some more movies. This time we're gonna take a look at the quiet corona, but it turns out it's not been quite so quiet. This channel is the 171 Angstrom channel. It's the cool corona at about 630 degrees Kelvin. And you'll see a lot of motions and uh, links between regions and motions within regions of the magnetic fields. This is very good for looking at magnetic fields. But one of the things I think is important shown by here by the green arrow are transequatorial connections. You can see here on the left that there is a region in the north connected to the region in the south. That means magnetic field has been cancelled between the two of them, usually in the leading part of the sunspot regions, which leaves an excess of the trailing magnetic field, which is transported up to the poles and what is eventually cancels the poles, getting us to solar maximum. Next, we'll take a look at coronal holes. And as I say, these are important for uh, solar cycle and space weather effects. To do that, we're going to go to the SDO AIA instrument at 211 angstroms. That's an iron 14 line at about 2 million degrees Kelvin. The dark areas are coronal holes. They are magnetic fields that are open to the interplanetary magnetic field. And high speed solar wind streams out of these into interplanetary space and can cause geomagnetic storms if they should intersect with the Earth. 
There are sort of normal coronal holes. These are high latitude coronal holes, like the one shown here with the green arrow. But there are also these two polar coronal holes, which are the ones I was referring to before. And you can see the northern polar coronal hole here very clearly. That's because the sun is at the moment tilted towards us. Our next movie is looking at active regions of flares, which is really the basis of space weather. This is from the SDO AIA 335 Angstrom channel. It's an iron 16 line at about two and a half million degrees. And you can see there are discrete areas of very bright emission. Those are, correspond to sunspot regions. Flares appear as short-term brightenings in these regions. So let's take a look at some flares. They release a huge amount of energy into the solar system and interact with the Earth. Again, we've used the SDO AIA instrument, this time the 131 channel, which is an iron 18 line at about 10 million degrees. And flares show up as intense bursts. And you, I've seen one here indicated with the blue arrow. Here we can plot the number of flares as a function of time. And I've color coded them with X flares being black. And you can see there are very few of those. Uh, they're quite rare. The M flares are in yellow and they are sort of episodic. And the C flares are ubiquitous. There's another way of looking at this year by year. I've broken the last four years down into C flares, M flares and X flares. The increase over the last four years for C flares has been from 23 to 91 to 577 in 2021, and so far this year, 2039. There's been a similar increase in the number of M flares. They started in 2020 with just two, then 30 in 2021, and 125 so far this year. X flares, uh, much rarer. We had two in 2021. We've had six so far this year. And of course, I expect those numbers to go up significantly for the rest of the year as activity continues to ramp up.
So let's take a look at coronal mass ejections. Let's take a look at their origin, first of all. I will take a look at the SDO AIA 304 angstrom channel. That's a helium-2 channel at about 50,000 degrees. That's in the so-called transition region. The dark areas on the disc are filaments. The bright areas on the limbs are prominences. And what you're looking for is eruptions like the one shown in with the blue arrow. Now that's of course an exceptional eruption, but you'll see lots of them in the movie. To see coronal mass ejection in all their glory, the thing to do is to look at a coronagraph. And for that, we're going to go to the Soho Lasco C2 field of view. And that is white light scattered off of dense material way out from the sun is that white circle in the middle of the dark area. And you can see that these coronal mass ejections actually become larger than the sun. They, can, they typically travel with velocities of a few hundred kilometers per second. The, some of the fastest ones have been up to 4,000 kilometers per second. If one of those strikes the Earth, which is not all that common, it can cause geomagnetic storms. In the larger field of view, the Soho Lasco C3, you can see these coronal mass ejections propagate away further, but it's been used a great deal over the years to see sun diving comets crash into the sun. And we had a couple of those occur this month. This is from the Crutes family of comets, and we get regular little comets coming into the sun. None of them seem to survive passage close to the sun. They burn up long before they actually reach the surface of the sun. We can take a look at the variation in the number of coronal mass ejections. And you can see just like the flares and active regions, the numbers are increasing uh, and accelerating. So that indicates we're nowhere near solar maximums yet. We had an instance where Mercury wandered through the C3 field of view. And one of the things that you'll notice as it crosses the field of view is it dims as it gets closer to the sun. Now, suspicious observers say, well, this is due to the sun not illuminating so much of the disk. Now, that may be partly true, but it isn't the real story. The real story is that these filters you look through in the coronagraph are gradient filters. They're much denser at the center than they are at the limb. So this is really a function of the gradation of the filters, not anything to do with uh, the phase of the planet. Besides, the angular change across this field of view is not all that large, so it wouldn't make much difference anyway.
I keep hearing that the sun is responsible for global warming and controls the climate. You can see here that that is not the case. The red curve here is global temperatures. The yellow curve is solar activity or the solar total solar radiance. And from about 1950 onwards, the two have diverged. As the average temperature of the Earth has increased, the amount of solar activity has decreased, which is the exact wrong direction for the trends. So conclusions. There's no sign of a grand solar minimum. In fact, the sun is becoming more active, not less. Solar cycle 25 now looks almost certain to exceed solar cycle 24 by a significant margin. Again, that would be exact opposite what a grand solar minimum would, would predict. We expect more sunspots, flares, and coronal mass ejections in the coming months and years. Solar maximum is not likely to occur until late next year at the earliest and may even go all the way through 2025. Every activity indicator is still rising. The range of the sunspot number maximum for solar cycle 25 is everything from 120 to 240. And again, my prediction was 165. So thank you for watching and I hope uh, you will stay safe until next time. Goodbye.